How you doing? Um, We're swaddled up in a blanket, as you can see. It's cold here in Armada. Mm -hmm. So I'm still. This is Dirk. And we are our heart murder. Mm -hmm. That we are. Yep. So um, we have a little bit of little things to, to talk about with you guys. We're changing the schedule slightly for release of podcasts and videos because teething problems. This is episode four, five. Mm -hmm. um, so we're still learning when it works for us. So podcast will be released on Friday and video will be released on Monday because we do it all ourselves. Um, we don't have any help and we have a three-year-old and I have studies and Dirk has work and we couldn't figure out when was the best time to do it. So hopefully so this... Hopefully Friday works. This new schedule will hopefully work better for us hopefully. all. Hopefully. And um, so we hope you guys are all enjoying it. Please email us with your personal... Um, if you'd like to share, you don't have to, obviously. You're in charge of the little click clicks. Um, but... Email us with personal murder stories or personal even crime stories. Doesn't have to end in murder. Um, we're actually the the serial killer we're doing today. I've chosen because it's from our our home because we lived in the Hunter Valley for ten years each. We did indeed, yes. Approximately. So for university and whatnot. Yeah. So I lived there from twenty three to two years ago. So over ten years. Mm. Um, and you lived there from 19 to two years ago, so over 10 years for you too. That's uh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so it, it, the Hunter Valley is like our second home, and, and this murder se um, series came from the Hunter Valley. So um, please email us, comment on Facebook. Um, we're loving to hear from friends, acquaintances, new people about what to do, what cases to do and stuff. Hmm. So... Please if reach you, out. Yeah, if you email us and you allow us, we will put it on the podcast. So, is there anything else that we need to talk about? Uh, I think those were the main points. Cool about here, us. Yeah. So, do we want to get into the murder? Let's do it. Sweet. Okay, so, have you guessed who it is from me saying what it, what it that it's from the Hunter Valley? Believe it or not, no. No, really? Yeah, Have really. you heard of Kathleen Bolbrick? Yes. Yeah. Most hated woman in Australia. Mm. So, Kathleen Folbrig, um, she was um, born Kathleen Megan Marlborough in on the 14th of June, 1967. Mm -hmm. And at 18 months old, her father, who was a driver of some sort, like delivery or something, it wasn't quite clear, mm -hmm. Thomas John Brighton stabbed her mother, who was also called Kathleen, 24 times. Jeez. His excuse was that Kathleen was neglecting little Kathleen. So, like, adult Kathleen was not looking after the baby properly. And he said that he had to kill her or she would have killed his child. Okay. So, mm, uh, man, mm, well, what stabbing's a bit excessive, especially 24 times. I agree. I mean, is there any real um, cause, reason to bring the the knife into this? I mean, what was she alleged to have been doing in terms of neglecting it, it little Kathleen? Doesn't say. Okay. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't. Um, there was only one real article, and that I think was in the Age. That um, it's a newspaper that um, went into like the details of the case. Even Wikipedia, which is where I normally start my research and go from there. Mm. Um. Like using the re references and stuff to actually look at the proper references, mm -hmm. um, didn't have that much on it, believe it or not. So um, I personally know more than what Wikipedia had because I've read um, Paul B. Kidd has some really good true crime Australian true crime books. Absolutely, and he's done some pieces on her. Um, but yeah, so they didn't really know what the abuse was. But because of that, her father got prison, imprisoned, obviously. Obviously. And Kathleen was made a ward of the state, which means that the state looks after you. Yeah. Um, just in case no one else knows what that means. And she was moved around the, the foster system until she was about three. Yeah. So late 1970-ish, um, where she found a permanent placement and she stayed with them until she was about 15. Mm-hmm. 
she ran away from them at 15 because she found out what happened to her parents. Right. Like that her mother was actually murdered. Yeah. And her father ended up being deported back to the UK. Okay. So, um, she just ran away from home, started working dead-end jobs, and then she married Craig Folbrig in 1987, and they settled in Mayfield. Mm-hmm. Now, we've both lived in Mayfield. We have both lived in Mayfield. Um, suburb of Newcastle. It, it is a suburb of, of Newcastle, which is, I think, the sixth biggest city in Australia, but I don't know. I think I read that it was the sixth one, but whether or not that's changed recently is... I don't know. It was, last I checked, the second most uh, populous city in New South Wales uh, well, yeah. next to Sydney, after Sydney. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Um... So, um, yeah, Mayfield's just a little suburb. It used to be really bad with drugs and, and, and um, sex workers and stuff like that, walking the streets and stuff, but it's cleaned up its act a bit now, and it's, it's, a, it's a cute little place to live. On the way out to the university. My brother actually lives in West Mayfield. Hmm. Hmm. Um, so, they had their first baby, Caleb Gibson, Fulbright. Um, and he was born on the 1st of February, 1989. Mm-hmm. He was diagnosed with a mild case of... Okay, I, I'm trying to say this right, but like, you'll have to give me a break here. Laryngomalacia. Laryngoma. Laryngomalacia or malacia, I think. I, mm. I would be pronouncing it personally either of those... Two yeah. ways. Well, I am a doctor. You did good, Sil. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lazy larynx. Mm-hmm. And so it's a condition that causes noisy breathing and one that Caleb would have been able to outgrow probably. But on the 20th of February, Kathleen put Caleb to bed in the room next to hers and, Car- and Craig's. He was found dead at 3 p.m. Uh, 3 a.m. by Kathleen and the death was thought, thought to be a SIDS-related death. <sighs> Or, as they used to say when this happened, a cot death. He was 19 days old. So, we go on. It's really sad. It is really sad. So, in on the 3rd of June, 1990, so like a year later, Patrick Allen was born. Craig remained ho- home to help Kathleen in this case. On the 18th of October, Kathleen put Patrick to bed and... Later that night, Craig was awakened by his wife's screams and he found her standing next to the crib. He noticed the baby wasn't breathing and started CPR. So, how terrifying would that be? An ambulance came and took Patrick to the hospital. He was diagnosed with epilepsy and cortical blindness. Now, I used to have epilepsy. I had it as a child. And I had it from 5 to about 14, 15, but I was still on medication until I was about 17. And, um, yeah, pretty, it messes up with you a lot. Like, I couldn't get my license or anything like that, but I, just different kind of epilepsy, I guess, causing, like, not breathing and stuff. Mm. Maybe. On the 18th of February the next year, so 1991, um, Kathleen read Craig at work, telling him, it's happening again, referring to Patrick's death. He was eight months old. So the couple moved to Thornton. Now, Thornton is a little bit northwest of Newcastle. Mm -hmm. Um, It's more of a country town. There's not much there. It's between um, Newcastle and Maitland. Maitland wouldn't be the next big city. It's happening again seems like a strange wording. I thought so, too. It sounds very... It has a very casual, blasé sort of... Um, well, she was upset, though. Tenor to it. Like, she was upset. Um, he went home and the I ambulance was, was there and that. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, the couple moved to Thornton and they had Sarah Kathleen on the 14th of October, 1992. But she had died on... She died on the 29th of August, 1993. So, she was ten and a half months old. So, they're getting older and older. Mm-hmm. They then moved to Singleton. So, Singleton is further west than Maitland. Mm. It's um, up in the um, wine co- wine growing area of the Hunter Valley. And um, it's a big-ish town. Um, on the 10th, 17th, 
7th of August, 1997, Laura Elizabeth was born and she died on the 27th of February, 1999. So she was 19 months old. Now, after Laura's death, things started to get a little hinky. Mm. Like, Do you tell? People started paying attention to the fact that, like, these kids were dying. Um, so an investigation was started because Laura was classified too old to have died from SIDS. Mm. So the other, like, um, Sarah Kathleen and Caleb, they were thought to have died from SIDS. Laura was undetermined and Patrick was thought to have died from the epilepsy. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's where it is at the moment. But an investigation was started because of Laura being too old. And that's when they found out about the other three children. So that's when they found out that there was a history of these in this family of these children dying and it became really sus. Right. So it took until then for all of the previous children dying, the precedents, I guess you could say, yeah. to all be pieced together. Well, if you look at it, um, Newcastle to Thornton to, Maitland, uh, to Singleton, all different precincts of mm. law. True. Two, like law, all different police precincts. Yes. Um, like I think Mayfield would be under Waratah Cops. Mm-hmm. Um, Thornton I think is under Mayfield and Maitland and Singleton has its own, I think. I think that's how it goes. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, they wouldn't have really spoken to each other. Different hospitals as well. Mm. It wasn't until the investigation was started that like they were putting local, the pieces together. Local government areas or subdivisions, yeah. yeah. Um so after Laura's death, Kathleen left Craig, but didn't take her stuff. So Craig found her diaries. Mm. Not all of them, because some of them she threw out. Okay. But um Craig found her diaries and in these diaries outlined how she was feeling at the times of the deaths, outlined what they thought from her writing outlined the the deaths. Yes. And reasons why Kathleen would kill the babies. So some of Kathleen's reasons were they cried too much. Some of them were she couldn't spend as much time at the gym as she would like, which would come, which will come into it later, and that she couldn't go dancing with her friends. There is an isolation that happens when you have a baby, and we get that. We've we yeah. had that with Stormy, but it doesn't mean you go and kill them. And the paranoia about SIDS and... Yeah, you, it doesn't mean you go and you knock them off. Exactly right. Yeah. So the get used to the fact that your you know your social life is is over or has changed for yeah. a while. If you make the decision to have children, mm. exactly. So and and they kept having children. That's right. Like it wasn't like they had two ch- one child or two children that died and then they went no that's it we're not going to have any more. No, they had four. Yeah. So the defense in the trial because she she obviously got charged and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, the defense in the trial said she had problems bonding with the children. Which happens. She was anxious about her parenting abilities, especially considering she couldn't breastfeed. We had that problem mm. with Stormy. I, yeah. I can't breastfeed more than like a month. Because then my supply starts to, like not being enough for the baby. Mm. So we ended up mixed feeding with Stormy. That's right. With Dakota, I struggled on until we, three months and then put him just straight on formula. But with Stormy, we mix fed, and she was on she was on the boob until she was what two and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's only been about a year since I stopped stopped nursing. Yeah, only about a year. You're mm. relating to this a bit, aren't you, Booby? A little bit, and that's parallels. why I wanted to do it because I have borderline personality disorder. I'm not afraid to say that I have borderline personality disorder. I have um, depression, anxiety, PTSD, OCD, all sorts of messed up shit, but. I've never killed a baby. I've never wanted to kill a baby. So I don't understand. I want to learn why. Mm. As as do I. Yeah. And um but I can relate. I couldn't breastfeed. I understand the anxieties about your parenting abilities. We had an argument about socks. Mm. That they weren't matching. <laughs> um a so few of those. <laughs> I, I get it. I do get it. Um and that she preferred the gym or friends to being around the babies. Um, she also gave up her job with each child, which led to financial problems and arguments with Craig, yeah. which we also can relate to. Mm-hmm. We we Dirk works part-time, and other than that, we're on Centrelink. 
while I study, trying to get better qualifications. Um, but we've had our own problems as well. Like, we, we have arguments about money sometimes. That's true. Yeah. She was also concerned about the weight that she gained during the pregnancies and, and would make Craig leave it, which is why she wanted to spend so much time at the gym. Right. Craig had this thing about wanting a hot, skinny wife. So after every pregnancy, and towards the end of her pregnancy, his eye would start to roam. Right. And he'd start flirting with other women and stuff in front of her. And um, he kind of reminds me of um, Rolestra from the Dragon Prince series novels mm-hmm. that we read. Yeah. And that he's very, he's got all these mistresses and whenever mm-hmm. one's pregnant, like, he gives up on banging her until she's finished having the baby and gotten skinny again. So, that was driving her as well. Um, she cared for the children day and night as Craig worked and was a deep sleeper. And sleep apnea ran through Craig's family and each child had a minor case. Yeah. Regardless, the defence said that she managed to meet her children's physical and mental medical needs, and the judge agreed with that, and so did the prosecution. She did meet their needs mm-hmm. until she killed them. <laughs> yeah. She obviously wasn't meeting their emotional needs. Just putting it out there. Yeah, that, um, I'm definitely getting that indication from what you're telling me. Yeah, like, she had a hard childhood. Like, don't get me wrong, she did. Like, bounce around a foster home, all that kind of stuff. But, and... And she did have problems with her parenting. But that does not give you a reason to kill a baby. Let alone four. Mm. Like, Laura, she was not even a baby anymore. She was a toddler. Yeah. Like, she wasn't even little. She was, like, a toddler. That's just sickening. Mm. Uh, No wonder she's Australia's most hated woman. Mm. So, in October 2003, 2003, however you want to say it, Justice Barr of the New South Wales Supreme Court sentenced Kathleen to 10 years for the manslaughter of Caleb. Mm-hmm. So that was the 19-day-old. 19, 19 18, 20, and 22 years, respectively, for the murders of Patrick, Sarah, and Laura. And 14 years for grievous bodily harm with intent for Patrick's first attack. Now, I'm, I'm not great at math, but that's 50, 60... 74 years. Mm. All right? The sentences were partially combined to 40, a 40-year 40 prison term. So she got off fairly damn light. How does that I don't know. Work. Um, and that was with a non-parole period of 30 years. Non-parole 30. Okay. In February 2005, New South Wales Court of Criminal Appeals dismissed an appeal, but reduced the length of the term to 30 years with a non-parole period of 25 years, which she took four babies' lives. She should have got a lot longer, in my opinion. She definitely should have gotten a lot longer. Like, insanely longer. Like, her diaries were saying, like, that um, one of the children, I can't remember exactly which one it was, it was one of the boys, I think it might have been Patrick, was in her diary, it said... Oh, yeah, Patrick died today with a little help. Mm. Like, seriously. And, like, that she she was her father's daughter. Like, in regards to the murders. Which was just... Oh, my God. So lame. So, is there any more to... That's the basic case. But I did have a couple of things that I... I, um... Wrote down just as, like, a discussion thing. Yeah. Which is, it's hard to detect mothers like Kathleen as a danger due to their children being clean, tidy, fed, and their medical needs met. Yeah. Also, it's really hard to define who's dangerous and who's just incompetent as parents. So, Kathleen seemed to be doing all the right things from the outside. Yeah. Um, Accidental suffocation can also look very similar to smothering or vice versa. Smothering can look very similar to accidental suffocation. Yeah. But as Sir Roy Meadows said, who is a British child ex- abuse expert, one cot death is tragedy. Two cot deaths are suspicious. Three cot deaths are murder. And Kathleen had four. So that's all my notes. So we can just chat now. Um, I... But I definitely agree with what Mr. Matthew, Mr. Meadows said. Well, it's... 
2020 now. Has there been any um, update? Like, has her... She's still saying she's innocent. Is there the chance that her sentence could be Mm-mm. could be lengthened? No? No, the New South Wales Court of Appeals is it. End. The end. No more. No getting $200 and pass and go. Well, you know, in the female prison system, women who um, oh, abuse yeah. or she is hated. kill... Is she in solitary confinement? No, she actually got into a fight with a fellow prisoner last year. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, but she's still claiming that she's innocent. She's still trying to get appeals, which you can't really do once the Court of Criminal Appeals have said what they have to say. They're kind of like the top dogs. Yeah. And to be honest, the Supreme Court of New South Wales is really top dog. Yeah. Like, the 40 years should have stood. Yeah. But it didn't, and that's what's happening, so... It's a shame. Well, look, she's, you know... Rock spider equivalent, so maybe she might not make the whole of her sentence. I don't know. She's been in there for, what, 20 years now? Almost yeah. 20 years Almost now. Almost 20 years. So to think that someone like that could be out in, like, 10 years? Yeah. Or, or a little bit over? Like, it's a bit redolt. Yeah. Well, I think she'd be under a lot of scrutiny once she gets out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Same with um our last episode, Matthew DeGrucci. Indeed. Mm-hmm. He's under extreme... Extreme... Um... Thing, but like a lot of a lot of women feel that way. I'm sure. Like I I talk I I'm part of support groups and and um, mummy groups and stuff on on Facebook and and other social media and there's always mummies talking about how hard it is. It's not it's not easy being a parent. No, it's the hardest job in the world. You don't get paid. You don't get sick leave. You barely get sleep. <laughs> But that does not give you any excuse to kill a child. I hate child killers. Me too. But unfortunately, Kathleen Fol- Folbrig is part of our history, especially in the Hunter Valley. Yeah. Where we spent a lot of our formative years. Mm-hmm. And even though she's such a vile person, maybe things... One thing that changed mm-hmm. was... Um, Cot death is now called SIDS. Yeah. Um, and um, through the work of the Red Nose Foundation and hospitals and medical personnel, SIDS deaths have gone from like, I think it was 500, like yearly um, in the 80s to less than 100 now because of sleep, safe sleep practices, information. Yeah. Um, being uh, like awareness of how to put your child to sleep in a correct way that it will lessen the, the likelihood of SIDS, that kind of thing. And instead of calling it cot death, they've the the sudden infant death syndrome, um, or SIDS, is a better way to say it because they don't always die in cribs or whatever. Mm. Um, so um, awareness and proper, um. Naming and stuff like that does go far in teaching people how to yeah. care for their babies correctly or care for their babies in a way that lessens their chances of dying of this. I won't say correctly because everyone's a bit different with how they parent. Yeah. There's no real correct way of doing safely. it. Safely. But correct, yes, parent, parent safely. And yeah, it does hit home a bit for me because... I am a parent that has mental health issues and and that. But even when I was younger, before I was diagnosed and before I went through therapy and that and had Dakota, there is no way in hell I would have tried to kill him. Like, it's just something must have been really wrong. How did they justify reducing her sentence? They said it was too harsh. How is it too harsh? No, I, I agree. I agree. It should have been more. I'd love to know what the fight was over that she got into in prison last year with another inmate. Oh, I didn't even look at the article. I just saw the the headline because it wasn't relevant to this. So yeah, fair enough. I didn't. I didn't really look at yeah. it. But um, I something must have gone real wrong in her head. Mm-hmm. And the fact that she's still saying she's innocent. Apparently, according to her medical experts, she kills. She carries a lethal gene. Right. I've done science at university. I've never heard of a lethal gene. 
granted, I'm not a genealogist. Well, there's been all I these... don't work with genes. Well, there's been all these theories throughout um, history. Uh, it, it, it feeds into the whole nature versus nurture debate, whether some people are genetically more disposed to, to crime, including murder than others. Yeah. That partially, that fueled the whole eugenics movement. Yeah, but what the they're Western saying world. is that she carries a gene that kills the babies. Yeah, passed down from her paternal side? Uh, maternal I have no side? idea. But okay. They say that she carries a lethal gene, which would kill the babies. There were bruises on Sarah's neck, though, so that kind of meh meh puts a little bit of a meh meh in that. Oh, unfortunately, the coroner didn't pay any attention to it. Uh, so maybe Laura would have been alive if the coroner actually paid attention and did his job correctly. My personal opinion. Speculation. Sounds like there should be an investigation. Inquest into the... Well, they, they said that, like... Um, I think it was brought up in the investigation, but it wasn't um, pursued. Yeah, that way. Thanks, man. That's right, huh? Yeah, so... That's very sad. Very unfortunate. Yeah, I thought so. Like, it's not... Um, these children were innocent. They didn't do anything mm. except be born to a psycho. Yeah. I shouldn't actually say psycho because I don't know if she's actually psychopathic, but... An insane person. Further research may be required. Further research may be required. Yeah. As you end most of your essay <laughs> <laughs> in university, further research will be required. <laughs> I always put that at the end of my essay. Except if it was a case study or of course. something. It's a good way to cover your ass. Yeah, brilliant way to cover your ass. <laughs> oh, um, that's yeah. got me too. Like, yeah. anything I was to do with children. I was wondering how you'd react to that oh. one, actually. Because you do get a bit meh about kid-related things. Oh, I'm like, sorry she had a hard life, but I still hate her. <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, I hate her too. Like, like if I'd see her, I'd punch her in the head. You don't kill babies. There are plenty of places that you can... You could uh, leave them with the father. Walk out. Go. Leave the children with a relative. Leave the children with the authorities. There are a m myriad of other options than killing your child. Well, unless her identity gets changed, if people recognise her, she's going to have a very difficult time on the outside when she gets released in terms of, you know, dealing with public services mm. and whatnot. I'm sure of it. She's, she's going to, Well, prisoners have a hard time on release anyway, but I think she's going to have an especially hard time, yes. I mean, yeah, like shopkeepers refusing to, to serve her and stuff like that. I don't like know. That. She looks a lot different than when she went to jail, so... I don't know. Yeah, if people recognise was what I'm saying. Yeah. Or yeah. well, she might not even go back to the Hunter Valley. Mmm. Yeah, well, that's, you know, ground zero. That's where... Yeah, that's where it all happens. That's where it all happens, so... And, as I said, there are still talkings about her, and people may not exactly know what her name is, but they know the story. Mm-hmm. Um... And, yeah, she's classified as a serial killer, so... Lynch mob at the door, wouldn't she? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's she gets just, released. It's, it's insane that someone... And I understand that, like, I know logically that there are, like, shaking deaths and stuff like that as well. But I don't agree with them either. Mm. Like, put the baby down. Walk away for ten minutes. Put it somewhere safe in its crib or somewhere where it's not going to get out. Walk away for 10 minutes. Let her have a cry. We've done that. We have. Like, there are always better alternatives than killing someone. Whether it's a child or an adult or whatever, there is always a better opportunity, a better option. And, but especially with children, I don't get it. Especially. Like, I get that it's hard, but I don't get the actual killing. And, honestly, I don't think the husband's blame free either. No. Like, Four of your children have died. Wouldn't you be at least a bit suspicious? Considering she's the one that's always there. Yeah, what's what's Craig's story uh, post? They got divorced. I don't I haven't heard about him being remarried or anything like that. Okay. But yeah, she walked out after Laura and they've stayed separated. Okay. 
but he he was the one that found the diary diaries. When he found the diaries, he said that the information inside made him want to vomit. And he took it to the police, yeah. and that was... I think he may have testified in court, but I'm not sure. There's no okay. there's no information about that. But you'd think he would. Yeah. Like... You'd think he would. And I'm glad that he took the diaries to the uh, to the police. Well, he kind of... He says he has suspicions, but he hadn't had it confirmed, and that the diaries confirmed it, and so they sent he to gave it to the police. Yeah. But, and dude... I know that, like, Sid runs in families and, and can run in families. It doesn't necessarily run in families, but it can run in families. But seriously, after two kids, when that third happened, I'd be asking some serious freaking questions. Maybe his mom was distracted by all the, uh, in quotation marks, uh, comely young wenches, you know, the, the, the hot, slim women he was trying to flirt with. Yeah, well, he flirted. There was no... No record of him actually having an affair or anything, though. But still, it's not. It's very unclassy to. But to, really, would would someone would you if if we lost Stormy for some reason, would you be really distracted by a hot chick? Hell no. Then okay. I'm sure that the grief and that was distracting. Like he lost four children, like he would be devastated. But. You'd think that he would have said something or or had some serious questions to be answered after even the second one. Yeah, serious questions. Like, all of them were deemed to be healthy at birth. Yeah. Even Patrick, raised. who apparently had the epilepsy. But from the information, I think she tried to kill him, but... Because Craig was there and started the CPR, mm. the epilepsy and the blindness was caused by the suffocation. Because he was yeah. deemed healthy at birth. So that makes sense. And that's what she was charged with. Grievous bodily harm with intent for that first attack. So that the courts agree with my logic too. Or I agree with the thought, court's logic, I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of questions around um, their relationship, uh, their their married life, culpability. Mm, there is a, there is a book called um, When the Bow Breaks. Yeah, that was written. It's available on Amazon, I believe. Um, when the Bow Breaks, um, that is the Kathleen Folbig story. Okay. So there's probably a butt ton more information in there. Yeah. And there is a revised version. I can't remember what it's called though. <laughs> so was... that's all right. Yeah, so that we can find out. Yeah, that's the story of Kathleen Folbrig. Fol Folbrig. F O L B R I G G Folbrig. Have there been any dramatizations? Um, not that I believe. I think. Ah, okay. uh, no. Let me let me rephrase that. I think she was in Dangerous Women. Okay. Yeah. The uh. uh the Netflix series. The docudrama. I think there was one there. Okay. I, I don't think there was one with Forensic Files, but I do remember watching a a documentary of kinds of her. Oh, wait. I actually now uh, remember, Syl, um, you watching that particular episode. I remember it being on in, in the background, and there were dramatizations of uh, Kathleen's deteriorating, spiraling out of control, mental health, while um, her... Her a child at the the time was crying, having a restless night, and then the talking heads. So yeah, no, that's that's yeah, come I, back I to me. It, okay, I think it's dangerous women or something. All like right, that. I'll try. I'll, I'll I'll find out. All right. Um, but well, that's yeah. close enough. So it has been investigated and depicted in popular in true true crime. Yeah, popular yeah. culture. Yeah. 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 So that's yeah. That's the our. Hometown, in quotation marks. Yeah. Crime. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, I, find, I find it very interesting, but others may not. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's all for this week, and, um, we'll see you later, murder fiends. And yeah. And you have a, have a great, have a, good have a great day. Um, yeah. Reflect on the issues we brought up in this episode, and, yeah. Have, yeah. have a good week. Go, go and watch something with puppies. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. Bye.